What's up, Shmodown fans? Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Shmodown. I'm Star Wars champion Andrew DiMolanto. And I'm Nikki DiMolanto. Third time's a charm. That's the third take for this. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My... We got there. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. Ooh, what a week of Shmodown. What a oh. week. So many great, good matches. A great great uh, free-for-all this past Saturday. Oh, or yeah. Or yesterday. Yeah. No. Wait. Yes. Yes. We, yeah, we had to catch up on it because we couldn't watch it live. But it happened on a Saturday. It happened on what uh, day? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got what you did there. You put down. All, you get, picked up what I was putting down. Yep. You Took smelled, me a minute. Smelled what I was cooking. Yes, I did. Marching to the beat of my drum. Marching. <laughs> Marching. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't sound like you said. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening either. I don't. But uh, all anything, I know is <laughs> anything that we had we to watched go, the free for all. We watched. We did watch the free for all, and it was good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anything we need to go over before? I don't think we should, we, we have anything, um, to go over. Uh, the only thing I remember seeing was that Christian said something about how the managers took a vote on interfaction matches. Oh yeah. And, um, I don't, I don't know that I took a, I, I don't, I might have taken maybe? a screenshot. Probably in it, but it was something about, you know, managers took a vote and the majority was that, you know, if people play each other, then they, then, yeah, then it just kind of happens. It kind of happens worth the same amount of points. I think the only big thing, and I think this was, it was announced before the season too, was TKOs don't um, come into effect when it's faction on faction. Right. Um, and because we have tournaments coming up. Yeah. So, um, well, but yeah, there are no faction on faction possibilities in either of these tournaments. Um. But regardless, like oh, because it's one player, yeah, yeah, from each, yeah, yeah, one competitor each. I'm sure we're gonna get. To, I mean, was uh, the singles tournament at least will probably oh, be yeah, one yeah. where there's so it, at least two from yeah. each faction. I think. Yeah, and I, I think that was established before the season even started. Like, yeah, it discourages people from cheating, winky, 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 and, and throwing a match to get an extra point. It's like, well, that doesn't matter anymore because it's yeah. faction on faction, and it wouldn't matter anyways. So yes. Indeed. Yeah, I think that's the only thing we really had to talk about, and uh, uh, there's, there's very little to talk about. That's like, yeah, duh, this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I thought that's what it was. Yeah, I, th I, th I thought that was already established, <laughs> especially that the whole like thing, like Hull Blue, that people were like, oh, the number one contender, the title matches with the faction on faction, which we already went over, and it's like, I thought we already established all this. Yeah, but who knows? I remember seeing that tweet, like, what? Okay, yeah, okay, I thought we. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> so let's already go ahead and get into the match because we have to go over three regular matches and yes. then the free for all, which is. We're, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. And yes. spoiler warning, of course, if you haven't seen any of these matches, especially the free-for-all. True. Um, I feel like we have to say that all the time because... True that. Because you never know. Never, never know. All right, so our first match, we have a rookie debut Ooh, yeah. singles match. We have Jessica, the sleeper schloth oh, yeah. of the den mm -hmm. versus Beth Maniac May <sighs> of the quirky merch. Uh, so it's completely wrong. I thought they went with mayhem. I was like, I would have gone pretty. I was, I would have been happy oh. with mayhem, but they went with the maniac. maniac. I mean, still a little bit of alliteration on a fun little play on, yeah. on her name, but well, they both start with May. Yeah, so you know. But I stand by it. It should have been. It, <laughs> it should have been May. It's gonna be May. It's gonna be May. <laughs> Beth, it's gonna be. It's gonna be May. It's not like it's gonna be May. May. It's like it's Beth. Gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be. May. May. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. It would have been fantastic, but nobody listens to me. As a lifelong NSYNC <laughs> fan. Yes. NSYNC. Mystical Greater Muppet than Jimmy. Backstreet Boys. At me. Yeah, I don't think you're not going to get any argument from there. Even yeah, though, even, I'm though right. even though I love the song, uh, that one song. Uh, I want it that That one way. and um, everybody brought it. Yeah. yeah no, those are the only two I that I really like. Yeah. I mean, they're good songs. They're all right. Oh, come on, you 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 get down to those. No, I'll get down for them definitely. Yeah, but those are the only two really Backstreet Boys songs that I really truly like. You name an NSYNC song, and I was like, "Yep, I like that one." It's like, yeah, uh, yeah, they will all put me on the dance floor. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and I've said it before. I'm a closet. I was a closet NSYNC fan when they were like the hot ticket because then it was it it was like you know, oh Backstreet Boys, what are you? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, especially if you're like a dude. What? Not liking either not, of them because you're a dude. Yeah. That's just the way it was back then. Who cares? But I, but like, you know, it's like, and sick. And then the, it would come on on the radio. I'm in the car by myself. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, me. it's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That no strings attached album. Or, am I right? Oh yeah. I'm not even going to say, we better stop now. <laughs> we better stop, stop now. This so might turn to an NSYNC podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> NSYNC 
was the best. <laughs> they were the height anyway, of like late rookie 90s, debuts early for 2000s music. Jessica Sloth. Boy Schlo- bands, very good. It was Jessica Sloth. Schloth. Schloth. I know. I always thought it was Schloth. Yeah. And, uh, but it's Schloth. Beth, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Back to the match. Sorry. <laughs> Jess and Beth. Round one. They both missed a question about Amelia Clark and Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. Beth missed a question about Karate Kid and John Cena. <laughs> Man, I was so glad. I was like, oh, we could say John Cena again. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody actually did again in the last episode. We did that. Thank you for that. Really? Yeah, they said, oh, I love John Cena memes. I'm pretty sure they... Uh... But do you know the exact one we're talking about? Yes. John Cena memes are probably hilarious, but this specific one... Yet again, another Vine reference. Oh, man. Okay, so if you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> Vine reference, if you need... I think we talked about Vine in the last video very mm-hmm. briefly. If you ever need to pick me up, YouTube look up, it. YouTube look up it. Vine compilations. It's a specific kind of humor, but it's yes. my kind of humor. Well, not all of them. Some of them are dumb. Oh, there are a couple that I just... I, I crack up every some time. Some of them are dumb, but some Yeet. of them are like, oh, my God, I will laugh every time I watch this. This be empty. But it's this one kid, <laughs> like... I don't, I don't know the context of the vine. It's a very short one. It's only yeah. a couple seconds. But well, this kid, are, yeah. he just goes, John Cena. And then he has like two recorders <laughs> and he puts them in his nose and he just starts playing his like John Cena music. And it's amazing. I wonder where that kid is now. Favorite vine. Oh. One that, when you say vine, one that comes to your head immediately. Like, oh, yep. no. Oh, I wish I had more time to think about this because now it's just the John Cena one. <laughs> oh, no. Croissant phone's probably your favorite. Hey, you almost made me draw my croissant. <laughs> Yeet's got to be a classic because like, you hear it because like I watch this. This bitch is empty. Yeet. Because it shows up in this one gamer guy that I follow on YouTube, gamer YouTuber, and he stopped doing it, but I wish he'd bring it back. Man. <gasps> it's such a good question, and yeah. there's so many but out we, there. Sorry, tension again. Sorry. Oh, man. Just get back to the match. I need to, I need to go. Get, maybe next week. By next week, maybe off I'll watch season. a Vine compilation. Off season, we'll do Beyond the Schmodown, not Schmodown at all. <laughs> Show you my favorite Vines, yeah. Like TikToks, just so you see the sense Beyond of humor. the Schmodown, not even Schmodown. Yeah, the sense of humor rolling around up here. <laughs> That'd be fun. So by the end of round one, it was four to six in favor of Miss Jess. Mm. Jess Schloth. Round two. Beth goes first. She gets opponent's choice. <sighs> Ugh. Didn't she spin away from something or she got opponent's choice? I didn't say that she spun away from anything, so I don't think uh, so. I'd be thinking something else. She got, she was given movie release mm-hmm. dates. She got a big old two point miss Ugh. and it did get stolen. She had went to multiple choice one time. She missed. It was stolen. Look at how I got auto corrected on the word stolen. Oh, what? what? <laughs> stolen. <laughs> Trying to spell a uh, space word? I don't know. I, don't know. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to another two point miss. Uh oh. Thanks, phone. Thanks, phone. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's stolen for some reason is typed in as S T apostrophe L L O L E N. Trying to spell a space word. <laughs> stolen. <laughs> Two point miss. Not stolen. Not stolen. Yeah. <laughs> then Jess goes for her round. She also spins opponent's choice. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. She is given war. Multiple choice. All four times. Mm. Got two. Missed two. And both mm-hmm. that were missed were stolen. Yep. Closing the well, nope, not closing the not gap. Really, Never mind. <laughs> it actually yeah, there widened by one point. Steals, so yeah. yeah, by the end of round two, it was eight to ten in favor of Jess. Round three, two pointer for Beth. Crime. I'm telling you, if you yeah. are a singles or teams competitor, you need to brush up on crime films. Crime and Brad crime. Pitt. Brad Pitt. There's a couple more. Yeah. Tom Hanks comes yeah, up they, a lot. They keep coming up in the third round. Like it's like they only have like Tom Cruise. Yeah, they truly have like five categories, and it's like <laughs> it's just like it depends on what number you pick is the order you get. <laughs> yeah. It's just the same category. <laughs> we know that's not Joking, how it works. That's it's not just, the case. It's not how it it just works. feels like it sometimes. Yeah. But seriously, watch crime movies because wow, two pointer for Beth. Crime. Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre appeared alongside Denzel Washington in what two thousands crime drama? Training Day. Mm. She got it. Three pointer for Beth. Sports. Who stars as an underachieving gambler who ends up coaching a little league team in 2001? It's hardball. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it was a who and not a what's the name of the movie. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. She did miss it. <laughs> Great note taking. <laughs> you might make a demon a lot to this, this week. Well, Andrew 
recently brought me into the year 2021 and showed me speech to text. So I've been I've been doing a lot of speech to text. And it leaves out some pertinent I use details. It, I, sometimes. I, I, I use it in my uh, my my daily job for because I have to do. Um, uh, closed caption on on social media yeah. things. I um you know obviously editor and one of the pe- one of my clients asked me to you know subtitle all the things. I'm like I'm not doing all this work and paying for another service. It's like hold my phone up to my speaker. It'll do it for me. So yeah. That's what I do. And I've been doing. <laughs> Pro it tip for, from Andrew DiMolanta: Use your phone to caption your for videos. Around three questions, I've been doing that, and sometimes it leaves out commas that really <laughs> help me read. That it. is the one thing because it doesn't. It, it never knows when the sentence stops, so it doesn't really you, get the inflection have, of punctuation. There is still work to be done, but it does like basically seventy percent, seventy five percent of the work for you. So, thank you, Google. Thanks, Google. <laughs> Anyways, Keanu Reeves, she missed it. So stick it with Beth for her five-pointer. Tom Cruise, which famous actor directed the political drama Lions for Lambs and also co-starred with Tom Cruise in the movie? Rabbit Redford. She got it pretty quick, too. So now we bounce over to Jessica. TKO avoided. Jessica, for two-pointer, gets biopics. Who plays J. Edgar Hoover in 2011's J. Edgar? Leonardo DiCaprio. Really? I guess she got it. <laughs> Unless that was a really weird auto Star Wars competitor. <laughs> um, three pointer for Jessica. Brad Pitt. Oh, Ooh! again, watch your Brad Pitt movies. My yeah. God, who plays Susan Parrish, a resident in internal medicine and Pitt's love interest, mm-hmm. in Meet Joe Black? Claire Formani. Sounds about right. Take some of these with a grain of salt. I think I got them right. Yeah. <laughs> she missed it. So Jessica for her five-pointer. Jess, Jessica, whatever she goes by. Yeah, I think Jess. Miss Schloth, animated for her five-pointer. This 1998 DreamWorks film won the Best Original Song Oscar for the song When You Believe. Prince of Egypt. Mm. She got it. So with that, Jessica Schloth takes home the win. 15-18 to the (laughs) den. (laughs) Double check. Yeah, I I forgot what faction she was on, too. I just I feel like a lot of times when I don't know somebody's faction, I just automatically say the den, den for yeah. some reason, yeah. and I just wanted to make sure I was right this time. <laughs> but yeah, she, she's on the den, yeah. so she takes home that win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean it was it, it was, was uh, a it, rocky it was debut a, rocky de- a little bit. Yeah, you know, was, for being honest, it was a rough match for both of them because getting both of them get stuck with opponent's choice. They they had to navigate, and it, it was harder for for Beth to go get through hers. Um, just just did uh, pr- pretty well, but she had to check down every single time. Yeah, got two missed two of them, so not the best of round twos for either of them. Both got things stolen, which yeah, which translates well for the other person that they got to steal. But you know, yeah, exactly. So this you know it's hard to say like because um, Beth's what was it her three pointer mm. with the uh, Robert Redford? It's like she's, no, that was a five five pointer. Yeah, five pointer. Boom, right off the bat, it's like oh, oh. yeah. Wow, that was really quick. Yeah, where she got it with relative ease. Yeah, exactly. But then there's other things like I think with Beth because there was a couple of times in her second round where she didn't opt for multiple choice, and I think she jumped the gun a little bit. It's like rookie mistakes. Yeah. So it's like polishing again, learning opportunity. Take your time. Check. There's no shame in checking down, especially in the singles division. Especially in the singles division. Especially so, in your debut match. Yeah, exactly. You want to be sure. No shame. Um, there's no shame in being a careful competitor because sometimes being careful is what wins you in the match. Exactly. Um, and it would have would have made a difference in this one. Probably, probably not. We don't know. Um, it's just you know, first game jitters. Yeah. Um, for both of them too. So it's it um, probably it might have helped because she mm-hmm. did. Beth, speaking of Beth, she did get. Two pointer stolen. Yeah. So that was a you know. Yeah, and that, and that was the one where I think had she, I think she was like a year but, off. But then again, yeah, uh, she did. She did get two one point steals. So. Yeah. There was a couple of move release dates where she didn't get right. And it was one. Off and it was or, one year off. Mm-hmm. And I think, and the one that the two pointer was a move release date question, yeah. basically. And um, she she was like this no and then it was just then went a year up yeah and stole it yeah i think that's how, how it happened it so was it's something like, like that it yeah. was a year different she prices right at it really yeah she just went one dollar and i'm not and saying that it. just didn't, didn't was just guessing at it maybe she did know it yeah um but it's just one of those situations where it's like there's no shame in being careful here mm-hmm. um just check down if you have to you, you know and, and again uh look at this as a learning opportunity and come back for your next match even stronger exactly so um yeah i mean rookie debut um again not the it's it's a rough go it's a rough go for for both of the competitors because you know it's just two 
how often do we see double opponent's choice in in a match? Yeah. It's just as often do we see double spinner's choice. Exactly. So, so I would love to see what would happen if, if, if they these got ladies slices had gotten, they wanted. Yeah, if yeah. they hadn't because, gotten opponent's choice. Because the round twos weren't weren't terrible. Um or sorry, the round ones weren't terrible. Yeah. And it's just they happened to get stuck with categories they didn't like in the second round. Yeah. So and, I would like to see them again. And who knows how much know. of those opponents' choices maybe rattled them a little bit going into round three. Yeah. You know, who knows? Maybe yeah, it didn't. Who knows? Yeah. But um yeah, it just it's rough to get opponent's choice, especially mm-hmm. both of you in your debut match. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what these ladies can do next time. Maybe they get something a bit more favorable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I would definitely be like, yeah, give her war. <laughs> yeah. <Ew. laughs> yeah. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Beth's uh promo. <laughs> because you, you saw snippets of it in, in the uh in the, the you know the nerd chronic edited. But if you looked at the the full one that she did on Twitter, <laughs> she's She's funny. She's funny. <laughs> it was it was a, it was a good promo. She like, also we has all a very specific kind of humor. Yeah, but I, it's cool. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's right up your alley. Yeah, yeah that. Well, she has that like very, it's dry. Mm-hmm. Not awkward. too dry. Not dry, too, but not too dry. Yeah, awkward for sure. Mm-hmm. Not awkward, just very mm. unique. Well. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, no, aren't no, we all? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But um, meet me in person, and I'll show you awkward. <laughs> so, you know. Aren't we all? <laughs> just depends on the day. Yeah. So again, these are two competitors that I would like to see again, just with with tar- like round two categories that are that are in their wheelhouse, and see right. how, how like what the the story is going forward there. Yeah. So. Yeah, just a rough, rough match for both of them. Yeah, um, I'm sure this isn't like the last. I'm, I'm for sure this isn't the last that we saw of Beth because well, spoiler yeah. alert, she's we'll in get the free to that later. On. But yeah. yeah, no, we're gonna see these ladies again. And also, mm. isn't it kind of nice to get that kind of a loss out of the way and like, you know, rip the yeah. bandaid off? You yeah, know, rip it off. Yeah, it's like huh, the only place to go now is up, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, not that either of them tanked, mm-hmm. but like you get that bandaid off. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I definitely wish I would have done better, and now I know better for yep. next time. So yeah, and that's the thing to say about all rookies coming in that start the career off of a loss. It's like, well, it's out of the way. Yeah. Because you don't want it's amazing to be like Adam Collins, go undefeated the title, but then you have that that thing it's on the looming. it's looming over you. It's like, when are you gonna lose? When are you gonna lose? So mm-hmm. you get the, the loss out of the way. Sometimes you lose your first two and you get those out of the way. So <laughs> That is true. Yeah. So And you hear yeah. about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so great job to these rookies. Um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see you when we see you again. So yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, the next one we got here. Oh, we got an opening scene. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. All right, my foot's falling asleep. Sorry, everybody. You're sitting on it. I'm on sitting on it. So Mark Ellis and Andrew Guy mm-hmm. they meet up in a park and they start <laughs> training. <laughs> So yeah, it's a it's a very it's a it's a kind of a long scene. I, I will say, but I'm fine with it. <laughs> I thought it could have been cut down by like at least two minutes because it was three minutes long. It I, could have been a minute shorter. It could have been ten there, minutes, and I would have been okay. Yeah, with there's it. there's a couple of repeated like jokes over and over again. I'm like, just come on, guys, <laughs> we got to match the two. I'm really enjoying Ellis I and do, guys. I do. I do. I really enjoyed that chemistry between them. So I was fine with it. I just like I I enjoyed it. But personally, personally, I thought it was a little too long winded. <laughs> but it was them <laughs> training in a you know it was them training in a park a public and park yeah. I, it was hilarious because Andrew Guy's wearing like waist up. He's wearing his suit and his shirt. Yeah. His, and then his lower half, he's wearing like gym shorts. Like but he's still really had- high socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, you know, he's he's on playground equipment and like just, I don't know, doing like physical training, like push ups while Mark drills him with trivia about the show. Yeah. About how many, announcing. How many round one questions are there in a Star Wars match? You yeah. know, that kind of thing. And there's 10. Yeah. There's 10. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was really fun. And uh, it was almost reminiscent of like Dagobah. Because it's like, wow, what does yeah. this physical stuff have to do with anything? Yeah. And then, you know, that kind of leads into the end of the yeah. scene when Andrew goes, what does this have to do? Yeah. With announcing. And Mark's kind of like, man, that, I don't know. Nothing, that's... It's fun, right? <laughs> no, but I think the big thing was like, it's like, oh, you don't have it. And he's like, oh, man, I guess I'll just go home with my Ford Fusion. It's like, what did you say? What? You got a Ford Fusion? I got a Ford Fusion. And then they just bond over having the same car. I'm like, all right, you can come over tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I looked it up. I don't even know what a Ford Fusion looks like. It looks like a fun car. I don't know. You always think of the Ford Fiesta when we think of Ford. Ford Fiesta. Dun, dun. Any film right fans out there? Very specific. Yeah. Oh, man. This is, oh, God, what year was that? That was 2000. 
That's like 2008, 2009. That was a, oh my God, over 10 years ago. <laughs> You're so pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Look up Film Riot Ford, Ford Fiesta, Fiesta uh, video. Commercial? Commercial, yeah. It's probably, it's, yeah, it was one of their You're paid so ads. You're so pimping. It's, it's the, the car. car. <laughs> it's so stupid, but we I lo- I've been laugh like idiots film every riots. time. Film Riot, that's, I, I graduated from the school of Film Riot. I learned a lot of my technical skills from Film Riot. Yeah, they're they a cool bunch of yeah, dudes yeah. and ladies. They and got a million f- subscribers on the channel, and they're still going yeah, strong. They're cool, cool people. Mm-hmm. I got on the show every once in a while. Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. We did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. For the shorts. I made some cameos mm-hmm. <laughs> in my time. I won one of their competitions, so yeah. 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 It's great. Anyways. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Ford Fusions. So yeah, no, uh, they bonded over having Ford Fusions. Andrew Guy gets invited back to Ellis's place. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was that scene. Thought it was fun. Really enjoying these scenes Love with Mark and, and Andrew. We, I, like, I, I want to see Ellis in more cutscenes because yes. he's good. In them. Yes. So now we have the deal breaker jacoby bancroft of the stars Mm -hmm. versus the aussie Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm not gonna do any australian accent because it just turns british and that even that's not that (laughs) i think we had a discussion off camera the only time we can do australian accents is when we're impersonating people is if i'm like i hear an australian person say something and i'm imitating what they're saying can't just do it off the cuff it's not like an idiot (laughs) the only australian person we immediately think of whenever we do it jim jeffries Very funny comedian. Watch him if you don't mind. <laughs> I bad would words. quote one of his things, but if you, you know can't. Jim Jeffries, you can't. <laughs> you can't on a family friendly show. If you're very, very okay with bad words especially, and you also like stand up comedy, watch Jim especially Jeffries. Especially one very offensive word. <laughs> well, that word doesn't really matter over in Europe. <laughs> You or in know? Australia, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, I feel like every time we hear somebody from like Europe or somebody from Australia, <laughs> I want to s- any other country really, and they're just like, I want to, I'm, I'm gonna bleep this up because I want to say it. <laughs> I'll bleed both my mouth and the audio out because I want to say it. You just, you just had to get it out. I had to get it out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to bleep it out. I, I promise. Oh, man. <laughs> I could go for watching one of his stand-ups now. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Anyways, the Aussie, Jacob Blunden. I bet Jacob knows of him. Yeah. <laughs> right? Jacob, am I right? You're not watching. <laughs> Jacob Blunden of Corruption. Round one. They both got perfect rounds. Mm-hmm. And they both got the bonus. Nine to nine. Yeah, and I think this is the match that somebody corrected me on um, in our one of our last episodes. Like, oh, this is the one of these competitors, the ones you were thinking of, where they were forced to retire from the family. I don't even know anymore. So I don't even care anymore. I'm not because sure there's what... so many people to keep track of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Yeah. I know that they're very good. <laughs> yeah, and somebody had to retire from something, but yeah. also Griffy Nooms did too. But it wasn't the same thing. I don't know <laughs> anymore. It was which one, which one of these was was the one of the part of the family force? It, it wasn't. I think it was Jacoby. Jacoby, yeah. It was Jacoby who was part of the Family League Four. The oh. Fantastic Four. Fan League Four. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyways, so perfect. Well, first how round. did we miss that opportunity? The Fantastic Four? Copyright. Whatever. You don't even. Marvel is weird about that. Disney and Marvel are weird about People that. People too soft nowadays, right? <laughs> <laughs> who cares about copyrights? It's not like it's a big deal. They made enough money with it. Oh, my God. Jeez. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Taking them out. <laughs> They've made enough money. Who cares Damn. if we say it? Wow. Round two. <laughs> Jacob goes first. We don't get copyright for me saying it, do we? No. No, we, right. ju- we just can't like make merch out of it and dress up as them and try to make money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> like I even would. So Jacob goes first. He spins away from David Lynch, whoever that is, and he gets Oscars. Multiple choice. Oh my God. One time. And he gets it right. Jacoby goes. It was very odd taking notes for this match mm-hmm. because you got Jacob, you had a Y, you got Jacoby. Yeah. Had to make sure I wasn't saying the one was the other and the yeah. other was the other. And then you can't put Bancroft initials. And- be- yeah, Bancroft and Blunden. I mean, not that they're the same name, but, you know, two syllables. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can't put their initials because they're both JB. Dudes. So this one was difficult. <laughs> Saying difficult week of note taking for <laughs> for Demi over here. Very trying <laughs> for me. <laughs> Jacoby spins DreamWorks animation and your boy gets a perfect round two. Wow. And God, both of these round two categories, especially Oscars, Oscars yeah. are just so hard to keep track of. And yeah. DreamWorks is one of the animation categories. It's just like, because it's not like Pixar or classic Disney animation. It's like, it's DreamWorks. You for, there's so many like 
out of left field ones you forget about. I can't even tell you what's DreamWorks and what's Pixar yeah. and what's not anymore. Sometimes I confuse DreamWorks ones with, with Pixar. Yeah, that was Pixar that did that, right? It's all potato yep. potato, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, these are... Like, could you watch a DreamWorks or a Pixar and be like, that's that one? I couldn't. Pixar I can do that with. DreamWorks, not so much. Nope. Can't no. do it for either. I don't know how... <laughs> At the end of round two, 16 to 17 in favor of Jacoby Bancroft. Mm -hmm. Round three, two pointer for the Aussie. That's how I started to. <laughs> yeah, that's how I started. <laughs> that's what I did in round three. Is I went by their nicknames because it, you know, it was easier. Two point for the Aussie, Tom Cruise. Another one that shows up quite often in round yeah. three lately. It seems Tom Cruise performs the Journey song, "Don't Stop Believing," a classic, mm -hmm. in the finale of what film? Rock of Ages. He got it. Two pointer for the Deal Breaker. I would love to know the backstory of that name. Yeah, me too. Maybe it's a fan link thing. That was the thing yeah, that's links. a good point. You did bring that up, and I forgot that you did. And you're mm. probably right. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I don't know. Seems every like a very. Do, <laughs> every time you do something like that, it reminds me because we used to do gaming videos on this channel. We used <laughs> I know to be funny. What you're gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one video. Look it up. It's, it's called Easy Peasy Gaming, and it's on this channel. Look, and it, I can't remember which one it was, but like <laughs> we were on what was it, Hanamura? Yeah. And Hans, what was it? Uh, Hog gets out of the choke. And you're like, he almost dead. Oh, you want to, he dead. No, he almost dead. Now nah, he not dead. Never mind. <laughs> and it's one of my favorite moments out of all the videos we did. I was trying to help you guys by communicating, but I was just wrong. <laughs> he did. So embarrassing. <laughs> he almost said, no, nah, he not dead. No, nah, he not dead. No, <laughs> don't listen to me. Look him up. They're really funny videos. <sighs> if we get enough views on them, maybe they'll, they'll return. Oh, we as the people in the videos would love that. Mm -hmm. They were as very a, fun. And while we're doing because we did it for like what a year almost mm. six months to a year something like that something like that and they just weren't getting enough views and like it was pretty much just hey guys look at all these funny moments i gathered for our friends online <laughs> and that's all so really, much fun yeah and that's all it really was and it's like ah, i'm just and they're so time consuming so that's why I, that's why i stopped doing them at least we have what we have at least we have those moments yeah and it's just, it's just harsh. Not like that we're not funny anymore. It's just, I don't have the time for it. And it's just a lot of work for those. No, we're not so funny anymore. Views. We're old Sorry. and not funny. <laughs> That's what it is. Just a bunch of 30 year olds trying to just be funny on YouTube. Just a bunch of 30 YouTube. somethings playing a bunch of 14 year olds <laughs> online and on computer games. Just dunking on teenagers. <laughs> just dunking on them and going, the hey kid, <laughs> shave your head, go to sleep. <laughs> just diva vomit all day. <laughs> Uh, deep mom, quad kill. Maybe you need to go to bed so you can do your algebra in the morning, kid. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> oh. Wow, we so many tangents today. I love it. It's just that kind of day. It's the name of the show. It's not. It's called Beyond the Schmodown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's what Beyond the Schmodown means. We go beyond Pay the Schmodown and talk about ridiculous stuff. <laughs> Two pointer for deal breaker for DB. Crime. <laughs> Who would have known? <laughs> Who would have known? Who would have thought in round three you get crime? Who stars as lawman Elliot Ness in 1987's The Untouchables? Kevin Costner. <laughs> Got it. You're extra spicy today. I love it. Thanks. Mm. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's all maybe of the just frustration just radiating off of me. Yeah, or maybe something's in the water. <laughs> No, I'm not drinking water. Yeah. Three pointer for the That's Aussie. Insane. Tom Hanks. Funny how. I'll, well, who plays? Okay, right, right. This mm -hmm. one. Who plays Ernie Cappadino, the AAGPBL scout in A League of Their Own? Ah, uh, yeah. Very good movie. I haven't seen it. Very years. upsetting because I think he misses it. Jacob said that he's never seen this movie, which mm -hmm. explains why he said what he said. He yeah. said Gina Davis, which. <sighs> doesn't make sense but yeah. what are you gonna do at least i think every manager is like i'd rather you say something off the wall than say, say nothing, nothing at all, all. because yeah. maybe it'll stick one of these times so yeah obviously gina davis isn't playing ernie yeah but at least he took a stab at it first you know he's never seen it yeah did he use a repeat for this one or no i don't think, I think he no did. he saved it for his five i think he saved all three for his five i and you know after the fact, I, while we were watching, I'm like, oh, man, I wish he would have used a repeat. But then after the fact, he's, he's like, like, I've never, I've never seen, seen this movie. So yeah. why waste a repeat on a movie you've never seen? Yeah. So anyways, it was John Lovitz. He missed it. That's the ticket. <laughs> That's John Lovitz, right? right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I don't, I don't want to do something before, <laughs> when I'm wrong. I, I think it is. I do it all the time anyway, so I don't know why I'm <laughs> trying to worry about that, but whatever. Five pointer for the Aussie, Quentin Tarantino. In which Tarantino film will you find minor characters named Big John Brittle? Mm -hmm. 
and Billy Crash. He did miss it. Django Unchained. Django Unchained. And with that, 18 and 19 in favor of Jacoby Bancroft. Ooh. My goodness. Yeah. This was so, no, a stellar debut This match. is one of, one of those matches where like, we're going to have a rookie match like this. I'm waiting for for like just two like rookies to come out and just like, whoa, what? What? Who are these guys? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this was a fantastic rookie debut. Oh, yes. Like we, you know. Um, people, somebody said it online. It's like, yeah, I think like sometimes people are being too nice. It's like this one was, was good. This yeah. is a good match, regardless if they're rookies or not, because like this is a great showing. Yeah, um, I mean, you both get perfect rounds. Mm-hmm. You both get all of your round two. One of you gets a perfect round two. One of you has to check down a multiple choice in round two. Mm-hmm. Still, you didn't miss anything. You still got your points. Yeah, but and the win the winner is determined by a guy losing on two questions that he would never seen the films, which is incredibly and unfortunate. Yeah, and that's the game though. Exactly. So, it just kind of unraveled for Jacob. Yeah. And, and, in the end a little bit. Yeah. Unfortunately. Like, yeah, he he did, did fantastic. He had to check down once in the, in the second round, but then it just it just got away from him in the last round. And yeah. That, that happens. Um Yeah, but I just this was a this mm-hmm. was a genuinely impressive, impressive match. Impressive match, yeah. And these two guys, the stars and the corruption, uh their factions, they found two guys that it's going to mm-hmm. be like, ooh, <laughs> you yeah. should probably watch out for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they definitely, so, and then they're going to also show up in the free-for-all and they're going to, you know, do yeah. some stuff. And might I say, like, this is proof. It's like, all right, so the big this big singles tournament is, what, four competitors each? Probably. So you get your three signed ones, if they're all singles competitors, throw one of them in there. Because yeah. if this and the free-for-all, spoiler alert, is any indication of how these two can play, Put them in the tournament. Yeah, you got yourself some players here. Mm-hmm. You got, yeah, they yeah. just, yeah, exactly. With a little bit more experience under their belts and everything, exactly. These two could, uh, these two could shape up to be something dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and, yeah, yeah. And for um, which one's uh, <laughs> the Aussie? I for like I don't Jacob. Wanna, Jacob for Jacob. Like like we said with uh, Beth and uh, and Jess, and, and, and the other matches. Like at least you got that out of the way now. Yeah. Lesson learned. All and, right. This performance, to, yeah, sure he lost, yeah, sure round three got away from him a little bit, mm-hmm. but still very impressive performance. Yeah, yeah, you you got those two misses out of your out of your systems. Like, all right, now I know why. Like, I got to brush up the movies that I haven't seen, and like, yeah, and surely that's not going to happen again. Mm-hmm. Or you get movies you just flat out haven't seen in yeah. round three. What are the chances that's going to happen again? Mm-hmm. I feel bad putting that out into the world mm-hmm. <laughs> because I hope it doesn't happen to him again. Yeah. But, and you, you know, yeah. this is out of the way. And you said, like, oh, man, it's unfortunate that it's because, like, A League of Their Own, it's like, oh, man, it's like an, it's an American classic. It's like, well... I don't know if I would say that, but I've seen it a couple times. Yeah, but you know what I mean? But it's like, he's all in Australia. Like, maybe this, this just wasn't popular in Australia. It's like, wait a minute. Most of the movies are made in the United States that are being yes, asked about... Actually, I made that comment during the free-for-all. Oh, yeah. Because oh, there was an SNL question. Yeah, that's right. And I'm like, ah, oh, right. I feel bad but for still, him because SNL, that's like, it's American SNL. But I think about it, I'm like... All these movies are American. Yeah, everything that's being asked about in the Shmodan are domestically released movies in the United States of America. Right? Yeah. There's right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There are foreign films that are asked about, but they they got theatrically released in the States in the limited run. Oh. So there's your in. Um Okay. So yeah, and I was thinking about that. It's like, oh yeah, no, that that, that I was like, no, I'm an idiot. All of these are American. <laughs> yeah, it's like, all these movies are American. What are we doing? So I think um, for these two, I think look out for these two. Oh yeah, absolutely look out for these two because this is a fantastic showing. Right? Yeah, Brother I was debuts. Fantastic. super super impressed with mm-hmm. these two. So our next match, oh, we've got JTE. We, we missed an opening scene, didn't we? It was um, the other one with Hills when he's um. Oh, maybe I didn't take a note of it. Yeah, it was the one. Did you? No, it was the one way he meets no. up at Alice at his place, and he's like, "Oh, you, you, you need six quiz in him on, on a bunch of stuff." Whoops! Take it away because I definitely I didn't can't take remember exactly it. how it went, but like he's at the, um, you know, he's being. Oh, and he was like, "Don't touch that microphone! Don't you dare!" No, no, touch no, no that that's mic- the other one. This is the oh, one where Jesus. this is after the the park one when when he's like, it's like his final test, and he's like, "Oh man, you, you you did good," and then it goes back to like the whole like, "All right, just get out of here." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There, that, that, I can't get rough, enough of these I'm, two. I, like, since you didn't take notes of it, I, I didn't have it fully in my no, head. No, like, now that I think about it, I think when we sat down to watch this match, I was like getting dinner ready and whatever. I was back and, and forth, and I just forgot, forgot about to it, take yeah. the note. And I was like, oh, I love it. Mark and Andrew, great. And yeah. then I just forgot to take a note. <laughs> so embarrassing. Yeah, I don't think anything huge happened in this. this um, 
No. Yeah. I think it was. I think that's. It's yeah. just the, the gist of it was like them training him. He, this him getting ready to be on the desk and it's like, yeah. all right, you're ready, but now yeah, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I he said something that made him go from buddy buddy to all right. Now get out of here. <laughs> Are you sure that that's not the one? I think that was the one where he was like, no, 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 don't you, don't no, you no, think no, about touching the, the Because that was the one when he was late. Oh. And then the one where he was in the park, he's like, well, at least you're on time. And I was like, I slept here last night. It's like, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm embarrassed. I didn't take a note. <sighs> yeah. It was a good scene, though. I, I like it. Jeez. Somebody should fire me from this show. Get out. <laughs> Let's see how you do without <laughs> me. <laughs> no, I need Let's you. See. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Extra spicy today, Dimmy is. Anyway, so let's get into the match. I know. It is kind of hot in here, even though the fan is on. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. Flashing. <laughs> so we got JTE of the Finstock Exchange mm-hmm. going up against Ben. Oh, sorry. Little Evil JTE mm-hmm. going up against the bandit Ben Goddard of the Den. We got JTE coming back for the first time since 2019. Mm-hmm. His two year hiatus, right? Two years. He's shown up in free for alls and, and stuff like he that. He showed up in the horror free for all, yeah. much to everybody's surprise. Mm-hmm. It was very exciting. Yeah. And he um, gets the third signed spot in the in the exchange. Right. That's right. Yeah. Talked about that before. We'll, we'll gloss over. Yeah. We'll, we'll just, gloss over no that. need to dwell on that. No need to dwell that. on it. It's, it's in the past. You know, it's whatever. It's not like it was offered to, mm, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I did take a note though that Ben Goddard's eyebrows, damn boy! Like I don't know if Ben's watching this. I usually err on the side of you're probably not, but if Ben, if you're watching this, your eyebrows strong. <laughs> My goodness, he ain't got weak eyebrows like somebody else. Yeah, I don't really know apparently. how that whole weak eyebrows thing joke meme. I, I don't know if that's the right word. Joke mm-hmm. started on backstage with Ben Bateman having weak eyebrows, mm-hmm. but if you put him next to Ben got it i'd be like okay yeah i guess <laughs> because my god everybody got weak eyebrows compared to goddard man my boy over here looking like he's filling him in getting a microbladed and stuff <laughs> lord uh, and i mean and i mean that in the best way possible i don't i'm not saying it's I'm bad not, yeah no <laughs> but i was like i just was watching him talk i'm like wow <laughs> those are some eyebrows it just it really struck me i don't know why just really struck me. And then we looked at JTE and we're like, he doesn't have any eyebrows, <laughs> especially next to Ben on the screen. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, oh, Ben man. eyebrows. Got it. Yeah, change your nickname. Got it. Ben eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Round one. JTE oh, missed a question about Sean Connery. RIP. Mm-hmm. They both missed the Princess Diaries 2. Yeah, because they confused it the first one. I think they forgot there was a sequel. I forgot mm. there was a sequel. I didn't even seen the sequel. I never even seen the first one. Was it good? You never seen the Princess Diaries? No, it's good. Princess Bride, Princess Diaries, never. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> See you next week. All right, now that we're alone, <laughs> let's get down to the real stuff that matters, like Ben's eyebrows. <laughs> Everybody always says the Princess. Di- bride is every a good movie. time we talk about princess bride it's like i could i immediately forget you you haven't my seen my name it. is inigo montoya you kill my father prepare, prepare to, to die. die come on that's all i know come on that's all i know from that movie again another paper that another wow, another movie i wrote a paper on and i was like let me rewatch you're watching you didn't watch it with me I, I we watched it i watched it no we yeah you started with my eyes you started not with my brain no, you started watching it and you fell asleep mm. I get that from my mom, I guess, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom's barometer for how good me. a movie is. It grinds me. <laughs> if she doesn't fall asleep, she's like, that means it was probably a good movie. <laughs> like, they, they go, my parents go to see a movie, and I'm like, my mom goes, I fell asleep. <laughs> I remember, I actually remember making that, like, a thing, like, when when I, when I did reviews on this channel. I was like, oh, <laughs> did Nikki's mom fall asleep? <laughs> <laughs> my mother-in-law didn't fall asleep. It was going to be one of the ratings. <laughs> Sometimes it's the most comfortable sleep you'll get is just drifting off while watching a movie. a movie. So, and I do it sometimes, so it must be in my blood. <laughs> the ASMR to me right now is uh, Smitty. That's the gamer I was talking about. Yeah, he's funny. He's funny. But I, I don't hear yeah. him. I can't fall. He's not ASMR. He is so loud. It's not it, It's not like the tingly. It's just something to distract me. Just distracts and relaxes. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Like if it's a, I, I rewatch the video because like I watch, it's like <laughs> you. I watch it the first time to laugh at it and then I'll, Rewatch the playlist just like oh i've seen this before <laughs> he's so loud whatever works for me, baby. 
Whatever floats your boat. Sorry. God, tangents. Sorry. Anyways. So they... Anyways, at the end of round one, six to seven in favor of Ben. Looking round good for two. Looking, Looking good for Goddard. Looking good for Goddard. Looking good for Goddard. Round two, JTE goes first. He spins martial arts movies. Andrew's been doing Taekwondo since he's a fetus. You see the belt? Which one? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That one. Yeah. Yeah, my fourth one. Yeah. 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 So I... Go, 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 go. I'll, I'll, I'll talk after after the. You, you so yeah, episode. well, I mean, there's not there's not too much yeah. to review because he did get a perfect round two with martial arts movies. JTE closet martial arts fan. I love this category because yeah. I. Oh, did, you flew through this. Category. I f- flew through this category because yeah, there are surface level, quote unquote, questions, yeah. but there are a lot of movies that I forget. Like oh, oh yeah, right. I love that movie. Yeah. Because you know Bruce Lee, huge huge like impact to me as both a film guy and a martial artist. Jackie mm-hmm. Chan, mm-hmm. both film and uh and a martial artist jet lee as the just the, the names just keep going donnie yen they keep going has so many of these like movies impact me so hard both for film and, and a martial, martial artist. artist so it's like i love this character and it shows up in other matches too i was like yes yeah yes because like ah there's so many movies i, I forget that i, I love like how like, many oh, yeah. po- right. police stories? I absolutely love that series. Carson police Harry stories? Hain. Yeah, Jackie Chan police story. There's like five of them. Okay. So good. Never heard that's, of That's like Jackie Chan at his, his height is, is the police story movies. Oh. So good. It's called police story? It's police story, yeah. It's like that. That's when he's, he really started hitting his stride as like with him and his stunt team. Mm. Watch him. So good. When, whenever like, because... Um, I was captain of our, of our demonstration team, and whenever we would do like Flex. skits and stuff, yeah, sorry. <laughs> whenever we do skits and stuff, I would constantly rewatch Jet Li, not Jet Li, like uh, Jackie Chan movies, because I loved his style of choreography. I loved like how it was like he changed. I can, I'm sorry, I'm going on a huge tangent here, but like this inspiration this thing that I have with J- Jackie Chan, huge inspiration because of before him, like, you know, martial arts, so they're all the unbeatable martial artists that that's what Bruce Lee was. Yeah. Beat the crap out of everybody, really didn't struggle on like. Jet Li, oh, what I loved about his choreography, he got hit and he got hit a lot. Yeah. So I, I always looked to him for inspiration when we were, we were doing skits and stuff like that. So love this category. I'm yeah. so glad they brought this category to the forefront because it's, ah, oh, it's so awesome. Yeah. And I bet it's more expansive than we would think. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. There's so many other movies like, oh, yeah, that was a martial arts movie. Yeah. Like, ah, I love this. Match. I can gush about this category all day long. And like there's... ever since we watched this match, every mm-hmm. once in a while I catch Andrew in some in like the backyard or in another room, just like shadow boxing and like just doing a form or something, just kicking into the air. I miss doing. I'm like arts. you miss Taekwondo. I miss. Like, it's been so long since we've done it. I mean, I still the technique's still there. The flexi- oh, that's for sure. The flexibility and the the speed. The flexibility. The flexibility and, and speed have gone have, have dwindled a bit, but God, the, my technique was was literally beat into me. Yeah. And when yeah. I say when I say literally, I kendo not, sticks. Yeah. I'm, when I say literally beat into me, I don't say, "Oh my god!" Like literally. No, it was literally beat into me. <laughs> Rough. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't days. do that now. Can't do that now. But back then, when I was <laughs> when I was growing up, that's how <laughs> that's how you got it. That's how you learned. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, your grandmaster's tough. Yeah, he's my Yoda. <laughs> he is an old an old grandmaster that sp- speaks broken English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. As yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because you guys are were always like like kind of scared of him, mm-hmm. and then every time I met him, he was a sweetheart. Exactly <laughs> like Yoda, He's like the scariest dude on on the map. But but I never had to test in front of him. Yeah. Andrew and I met through the UCF. Taekwondo. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, I never tested for a belt in front of him because mm-hmm. I think I would have just peed my pants. Mm-hmm. You so. tested underneath my other master. Exactly, Master, uh, master Anthony. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, no thanks. <laughs> That man's scary. But he biggest sense of humor of, of any master I've ever met. So, yeah. Good times. Good times. Sorry, sorry. Just good times. This category, I love this category. Thank you, thank you to the writing team for or whoever's responsible for bringing this category in. Thank you so much because I love this category. Yeah, and thank you JTE for spinning it and yes. staying with it. Ben Goddard goes. He spins away from the '90s. Gets Wizarding World. Oh, good move on him. Very good move yes mm-hmm. oh yeah that's right he gets a perfect round too mm-hmm. good job ben good job ben i think he i think he likes a harry potter i think he does what a nerd <laughs> <laughs> who likes a certain category and is exactly. good in a single category why don't you give me tell me a spell ben <laughs> <laughs> what's a horcrux <laughs> <laughs> i still yet have still 
yet to watch all the Harry Potters. I've yet to watch any Harry Potters. You've watched one. Nope, you, sure have. You haven't seen one. You guys went to go see one one time, and I was out of town. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that it. That was one of the other ones I accidentally seen. <laughs> 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 Pretty much all the Harry Potters I accidentally saw. Yeah. So. No. It's a big old goose egg for me. Sorry. <laughs> 14 to 15. Ben, round three. Two-pointer for JTE. Animated movies. Which Oscar nominee lends his voice to the eccentric but intelligent and heroic chameleon Rango in Rango? Johnny Depp. Depp. Got it. Seems to be a couple extra aces here in this deck. Just That's the way I like it. <laughs> That's a cute movie. Love that movie. Such a good movie. So it's a good movie. It's been a Such while. Such a good movie. Two-pointer for Benjamin. On the Oscar. Steven Spielberg. While passing away... Before he could complete it. Yeah. It just seems weird. I hope I didn't get autocorrected. Mm -hmm. While passing away before he could complete it, Kubrick, oh, was working on this film that was taken over by Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. AI. AI. Artificial intelligence. <laughs> Released in 2001. What was the movie? Mm -hmm. AI. Artificial intelligence. Ben got it. Three-pointer for JTE. Pixar mm. in Inside Out. Anger says, congratulations, San Francisco. You've ruined... What type of food? Pizza. Pizza. Love that movie. Pizza man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our Overwatch team. Shout out to my Overwatch clan, friends and IRL. <laughs> Three pointer for Ben. Martial arts. Look at that. Love this category. Gabriel Yula. Once an mm -hmm. agent of the multiverse authority that places interdimensional travel, mm -hmm. seeks to hunt down all variations of himself in alternate universes in what Jet Li film? The one. The one. You've never seen this one, so you probably don't get the premise of it. Sure haven't. So, I mean, it makes sense. There's a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. copies of himself, and he's like, no, I'm the one. No, so once you... Once, I think I just did the whole movie right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not the best movie, and it kind of got... Um, it got a lot of hype because they thought people thought it was a sequel to Matrix because you know the one. Oh, but um, yeah, the the con it's not like you copyrighted it. No, but the concept of the movie is like you know the multiverse and like once a variation of you dies, your you know the power between that connects all of you gets split amongst the rest of you. So if all of you die within the multiverse, there's this one person that has all of the power so you so every time one of you a version of you dies you become stronger faster more intelligent and, and oh like it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic concept it's just so it's like you want to go out there and kill the yeah. other version and, and the the eula was a member of this team that would police the multiverse preventing sh almost war, stuff like this huh um, so but he ended up killing a variation of himself and then you know like oh i'm gonna because like you know it, it immediately happens like once one of you dies that power you can feel like he does it it goes oh, and then you get stronger i didn't say it was the best movie in the entire world it sounds like a fun premise it's a very it's a great premise the execution was kind of like eh. so mm -hmm. it's not the best film in the world but i remember really liking the, the fight fight scenes hmm. sounds so. like fun mm -hmm. all right maybe one day five pointer for jte black cinema mm -hmm. which actor appeared in the films black belt jones black samurai and Ooh. Enter the Dragon. I think Enter the Dragon is what saved him. Jim mm -hmm. Kelly. Got it. Mm -hmm. Five-pointer for Benjamin. Spy movies. What 2018 spy film features supporting performances from Charlotte Rampling, Mary Louise Parker, mm -hmm. Kieran Hines, and Jeremy Irons? Oh, he forgot about uh, Red, Red Sparrow. Sparrow. I almost said Black Sparrow. Did he? <laughs> no, yeah, it, it, no, I almost said Black oh, Sparrow. Oh, okay. I was going to say. It's Red Sparrow. i never seen it, so. He did miss it. Mm -hmm. So with that 20 to 24 in favor of JTE, his, com Ooh. well, yeah, his comeback match. Comeback, yeah. In the singles division. Yeah, I was really looking forward to this match because this is a statement match for both of these players. Yes. JTE, again, coming back from a two-year two, two year hiatus. Is he rusty? Is ring rust really a thing for him? Mm -hmm. Ben Goddard. We only see him once in the in the singles division, then we see him in the team. Yeah. Mostly tries his, his hand at IG and then just kind of falls off the map and we never really hear from him again. Yeah. Um. So this is like, if you can beat JTE, yeah. Woo, look out for Goddard. And he did really well throughout the entire entirety of the match. He's just leading the whole match, and then he just gets, got a five-pointer that got away from him. Gets stuck with a five-pointer, and he just gets away from him. Um, so, I, again, I, no competitor likes to hear this after a loss. is like, hey, no. man, nothing to, to hang your head on. It's like, yeah, yes. That does not help at all. It <laughs> doesn't help at all. It's like, yes, there's still a lot to hang my head, head yeah, I'm on. Yeah, I'm still going to be disappointed. Still be disappointed because I lost. Nobody likes losing. No. Um, but if there's anything to take away from this is Goddard is the, is the real goods. Yeah. This is... Because uh, um, Kate said it many times, like, this is the guy we're hitching our wagon to. 
Yeah. He is, I think he's the captain the of... The centerpiece. Yeah, oh. he's the centerpiece of this faction. Yeah. And this match proves it. He is the real good, so I don't think anybody should take away from this match. It's like, oh, he got he got a category that he liked in round two. Um, and so did like, JTE. Yeah, so did JTE. So that's the game. And he played the game really well. And he almost beat JTE. Yeah. And... Just came down to his just vibe. Just came down That's to his it. vibe. It's not like he got beaten to the ground. Not at yeah, all. Exactly. He was leading this the whole a, match. This is a really good showing. So I, I know he probably doesn't want to hear this. It's like, man, don't hang your head on this one. You're, put him in a tournament. Put him in. He's in the teams, right? Yeah, he's in the teams tournament. So yeah. watch out for Goddard. Yeah. Because like I said it in the uh, last couple of episodes, like put him in everything possible. I would. You're, you're, you're putting him as the centerpiece of your faction. Mm-hmm. Prove it. I think she said put that him, in him and Paul, yeah. their team was going to be like put, Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. Put him in everything possible if he's available. Right, right. That's the asterisk because, you know, yeah. busy man, man. He's a busy little bee. Busy little bee. If he's available, put him in it. So um, great, great match. And as far as JTE goes, because people were, were saying when they signed him over somebody else, they're like, what are you doing? Why are you signing JTE? He's been away from the game, blah, 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 blah. Everybody forgets JTE's not a schlub. No, he's not sure he had that one awful year, but I, I think he said it himself. Like, I kind of agree with him sometimes. The I, I don't know, but he he had this one thing where he where he's like, when he was playing the questions, were, he he felt he felt was, that yeah he felt that the questions were harder back then, and I'm like, all subjective, all subjective. The game has changed dramatically oh, since yeah. he like since back when he was in dominating so many ways. in so many ways but um just to throw it out there how many perfect rounds when jt was at the height of the patriots power how many perfect round ones in the singles and teams division did we see when they're competing uh, probably not a lot very few how many perfect rounds are we seeing in the past two seasons you see them quite a few quite a bit so not that that says anything about like the difficulty of questions but it could speak to the questions. It, it could, could speak, speak to, to the how well they're preparing because people yeah. are the fa- the more mm-hmm. structured this game becomes, the more people are actually taking it seriously and preparing for yeah. it. So maybe that could be part of it too. Yeah, that could be part of it too. But when you take it at face value, it's like okay, maybe maybe JTE does have have a point. But when you're operating at JTE's level, mm-hmm. like we've said, like if everybody's had this conversation ten, I don't know, zillion times, yeah. that when you're at the level of like JTE you know a you you ha, you have a record in this league you have yeah. a rule named after you yeah. when you're operating at a certain level you start to lose grasp of what a difficult question is yeah <laughs> so maybe jte is at he is not maybe he is at the kind of level yeah where like where people talk about him as as if he's one of the greats he might be at that level where he's like yeah these questions are pretty uh pretty low hanging fruit uh, let's go through jte my dude yeah. like yeah. you're like one of the best teams players the league's ever seen Mm -hmm. so you know all those kinds of comments you take them with a grain of salt and you don't you know yeah it's all very subjective like we've said a trillion zillion million times yeah but i'm just i'm just saying like maybe he's right maybe who knows it could be that yeah it could be people preparing differently because the game is different advocate sometimes and i like to play the other one (laughs) on the other side yeah I you just know. like to have, strike up conversations with them. That's, yeah. that's what this podcast is about. Exactly. It's just we're just, we just, just, we're just, just talking. We'd just be bored if we just, just talked about the matters. We didn't, you know, we're just kind of having a conversation. <laughs> anyway, so let's go ahead and get into the free for the all. Free for all before we go too long. Seen it, mm-hmm. and you don't want to know what happens. Come back later. Spoiler alert. It is a pay per view event, mm-hmm. so if you don't have the link and you don't want to know what happens, come back. And it's long. God. And I said it before. We were in the promo. <laughs> we were. You were. Uh, Nerd, Nerd Chronic, I see you, man. Thank you for using clips on for, for the show. My man, Nerd Chronic. <laughs> but yeah. So cool. One of these days, we are going to. Like, I remember the last time we were in LA, and he was mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, come on yeah, over. I'm going to take you out yeah. to eat or something. We're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to take you up on that offer. I promise you, buddy. We're almost both fully vaccinated. I'm fully. Andrew's halfway there. Halfway. So halfway there. We're going to get my one of these days. Get my second dose on the 11th. One of these days we're going to get mm-hmm. there. Be back to socializing again like because normal folk. Eric and Video Drew, they got some puppies that I need to play with. <laughs> so, I think they have like two dogs or something. I think so. And I'm going to play with them one day. I've only played I've only interacted with one schmo dog. And it's Snickers. Snickers. <laughs> and your guys dog. Funny story. I played with Andrew Guy's dog Snickers 
haven't met Andrew Guy. <laughs> his girlfriend was, was I talked to his girlfriend for a little bit <laughs> and Snickers almost knocked me over by tying me up with the leash. <laughs> That's right. Still haven't met or talked to Andrew Guy. <laughs> well, no, uh, you know, on his Twitch stream, I'll say hi, but never met him in person. I still with don't dog. think he's put the two and two together because he recognizes the name Dimmy. Yeah. I it's don't been think a while. He, I don't think he recognizes Dimmy is, you know. Me. Yeah. So. Well. Why am I doing that? That's dumb. I don't know. <laughs> one weird. of these days, maybe. Maybe. One of when these we're days. all vaccinated. We're almost there, people. We're almost there. One of these days, we Anyways, find ourselves but, back on the West but Coast. Back on track. How do we get... Oh, Nerd Chronics dogs. Yeah. I will play with them one day, and we will go out to eat or yeah. whatever one day, anyways, I promise. I said it yet last week. The free-for-all is an event like no other. Yes. If you introduce somebody to the to the schmo, now don't. You, there are some matches where it's like, hey, watch this match, or hey, watch this. This your yeah. immediate thought should be, hey, watch the free for all. It is long, yeah. But you get introduced to so many characters. You you just get forty yeah. personalities, rapid, pretty yeah. pretty rapid fire. And you you, you know? you get a basic gist of how this operates. Yeah, and it is un. It's it's a great event. The, again, my only gripe was. It wasn't in live. You don't get the the fans there getting hyped when certain people come out or certain things get yeah. revealed, and like that was the thing I was I was missing. Exactly. But other than that, and that's the thing where it was like it was already like a three hour long stream, and yeah. it's like how much longer would it have been if we had the clapping, if we had yeah. the cheering, if we had those moments live? Who cares? Because it would have been electric. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah, I was. I remember turning to you, being like, "This, we are already at the two hour forty five minute mark. What would happen if there was people cheering? <laughs> yeah, and we like." Yeah people think, oh my god i can't believe this competitor and then we have like five minutes of cheering i think there's two two live events when we get back to live events, there's two live events that are on my bucket list for down mm. one is spectacular the other is a free-for-all yeah i want to be be there live for a free-for-all just to get cool. that that feeling it's yeah there's nothing like a free-for-all yeah so um yeah and this one, one yeah one day and obviously we're not gonna go round for round for round i think we're gonna hit major beats yeah because 40 competitors man that's that's a lot it's a lot of people so let's just Try to try to hit what we like overall thoughts. What what did you think of this free for all? Like overall thoughts, it was. I feel like there was obviously mm -hmm. one very big defining. Uh, there was one really big moment that changed the entire tide of the free for all. I believe. Oh yes, yeah. Um. So there was an opening scene where mm -hmm. Bibiani met with Grace. Yeah. And he said that he got number one again, <laughs> and he asked to switch. Graciously, he randomly got number one. <laughs> randomly got number one, and he asked Grace if he could switch, yeah. and. Uh, she was like, uh, yeah, no. And then he like offered her so salt, salt cat, cat soap, soap on Etsy. Go buy some. It's de it's delightful. Etsy it smells very good. Slash salt cat, cat soap. <laughs> and uh, I think there was some other things that he offered or whatever. And she like, you know, mm -hmm. he swayed her. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know what? I will let you switch. And then she like, ducked out and, and gave him a really big bill to pay you <laughs> like know. the look on his face was like a... as he kept on like with the receipt oh, yeah. Viviani is a treasure yeah and um it's funny and i i'm assuming this is part of the joke i don't know yeah. that he was like i don't want to can i not be number one again <laughs> and then he still gets number five it doesn't even matter if you're one through five you're still, still in the first the, table still in the first table yeah so, <laughs> i don't know if that's the joke if it is it's funny yeah but, that, yeah that's 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 funny like if you're one through five it really doesn't matter what it doesn't really matter you're still matter. in the first table yeah you still and gotta go through the entire competition if you all last x amount of rounds you still alas the same amount of rounds together regardless if you were one two three four or five yeah. but whatever it's whatever so yeah no so the first table that gets introduced you got yourself ethan Irwin, saul the barbarian bradley tingle and william bibiani yeah and from that moment william bibiani does his thing mm -hmm. you know ethan Irwin. there was there was several people of course that lasted one round yeah then you have like your Ethan Irwins who seemed, and I tried my best to take notes on who got how many right, who got yeah. how many wrong, how many rounds they lasted before they got eliminated, whatever. So Ethan looks like he lasted four rounds. Barbarian lasted three. William Bibiani, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, according to my records. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think I got Pretty it. Pretty sure we're right. So he lasted ten rounds. And the crazy thing about one of his rounds yeah. is that he literally changed the course of the game because there was one question about the movie bumblebee mm -hmm. and it was a question about something about a sport sport yeah what did she do or something i haven't seen something. the movie yet and um bibiani happened to be the only person on the table that got it right cleared the table and let me tell you the names that yeah. he cleared mark andrago adam collins dan merle ethan Irwin. what <laughs> yeah like, like 
people were probably expecting Adam Collins to be the golden boy yet again mm-hmm. and last his way the distance. Mm-hmm. Adam Same Collins. Same with Dan Merle. Like, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Adam Collins lasted three rounds respectable yeah. don't get me wrong but i think people were expecting a higher number of rounds for him yeah and then you run into a brick wall like william bibiani in a free-for-all where he seems to live and breathe <laughs> imagine if he was in a horror free-for-all lord help us yeah um but yeah bibiani he changed the course of the game yeah I mean, because you got andraco who is also a free-for-all legend if i would say so did myself the same exact thing i can't remember which free-for-all it exactly. was exactly cleared the board of just gigantic competitors exactly and then Adam Collins, Dan Merle, the, the two current ones that are, have been duking it out for the singles title, mm-hmm. Lord. And then Ethan Irwin, another one, another former. These are all former or current champs. <laughs> like, how nuts is that? Yeah. And everybody that joined the table after that was like, thanks, bibs. <laughs> yeah. Could, could you, like, can you imagine how much longer this competition would be with Collins and Merle in there? And 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 still, and, and, and Draco and, and Irwin. And, yeah, like. Any of those four are still in that after this round? Different game. Different game. It, it's pr- it probably would have been like a six hour free for all because. But yes, having the past, the two past, uh, the current and the former singles champion go out in this round was gigantic. It was huge, huge game changing. It changes the course of the entire entire event. Yes, I'm. I, unbelievable mm-hmm. um there was a big surprise i think mm-hmm. when at, at number seven robert parker entered the ring yeah that was really that really was good. a fun out of left field mm-hmm. um you got dan merle who shockingly lasted one round because of that yeah, unfortunate that's... you know so that's insane <laughs> um griffin newman finstock exchange griffin griffin Nooms. Nooms. do love that name <laughs> I will say that he is he is rapidly becoming one of my favorite rookies. You you love his, his sense, his of, sense humor. of humor right on my alley, <laughs> and his pink beanie, his pink gloves, the green screen. It's just it all is perfect. Yeah. And um, he came in at number eleven. He had a very strong showing. One, two, three, four, five, six rounds before he was yeah. nominated. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Jesse Swift for the Quirky Mercs. That was I actually that did, was a, that was a surprising. <laughs> I, I messaged Jesse. I was like, I didn't even know you were competing in free for all, my dude. And he did much better than than I would have done because <laughs> me too. Little, I don't, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do this because I jokingly in a in a, one of our Quirky Work meetings because we were all like, I was like, hey, we need competitors for the free for because we each got like what five competitors. Yeah. And like, who wants to be? And I jokingly said like, hey, if I'm looking to embarrass myself, I'll play. <laughs> And then I get a text from from Coy when it's like, "Hey man, hey man, remember how you said you were joking about being the free for all? You want to be in it?" I'm like, uh, "No, I don't want to be in it. No, absolutely not. I don't want to be in this. I got other things to worry about, my my guy." <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and I I almost I don't want to guarantee, but I'm probably Jesse got put in my place. Who knows? <laughs> so maybe. <laughs> But yeah, I, I text I texted him after. I was like, "Man, you did much better than I would have done." So I'm he glad lasted they, two rounds. Yeah, I'm glad they put you in, st- in instead of me because I would have embarrassed myself. Because there was a couple of rounds where like I got maybe like two right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Sam t- called me and asked me if I wanted to be in it, and I was like, "I don't think that's fair. I want other people to have their <laughs> yeah. shot. I don't want to, you know. Mm-hmm. I just want other people to have their shot. I don't. I don't want it to be unfair because I'm in it, you know. Because mm-hmm. I'm just gonna rip through it." <laughs> So I told him it's not right. I, I thought you were going in the other direction with that. It's like. just not right. And I said, Sam Levine, no, no. <laughs> I want other people to have their opportunity I to mean, shine. You, you look at her play along as if that we've done in the past and you, you kill them. You, I got good. a high 90 accuracy rate in singles and teams. <laughs> it's, it would have. 90% misses? I just misses? told Sam, listen. <laughs> wow. I told Sam, listen. <laughs> I will graciously step aside for this one and let other people shine. You know, if me stepping out lets Ethan Irwin have a moment <laughs> in the sun, I will step aside for him. You know, I just, it wouldn't be fair. So I said, Sam, I'm going to respectfully decline your offer. <laughs> Didn't happen. Fake. Because I'm horrible at trivia that's not Star Wars. And even that, sometimes... Ah, you're selling yourself short. I appreciate the vote of confidence. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll just say I'm better at Star Wars than I am at singles and teams, and intergeekdom for that matter. Yeah, you're better at intergeekdom than you give yourself credit for. If I for. spin Star Wars. <laughs> MC, you're pretty good at. 
<laughs> You're decent at MCU. Watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier lately has made me like, I really want to rewatch Captain America, the first Avenger, and the Winter Soldier. Captain America, first Avenger is a better movie than people give credit for. I, I really, really want to rewatch I it. I really enjoy that, that movie. Good times. I We're love, going to. Captain America's my favorite Avenger, if you haven't noticed. And out of the MCU. Yeah. yeah. When Andrew got his first vaccine, he wore his Captain America shirt because it was like he was getting the super soldier. One of the gamma rays hit. I'm angry. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> anyways right. uh, <laughs> tangents <laughs> yet again uh mark hoik jumps in the mix he he, he, he lasted the long he four rounds he missed like what three questions or something like that well his first two rounds he went perfect and then he missed two and three respectively in the next two rounds yeah um you know you there's got so many there's, who's some there's other a couple people? of surprises though. jacob london yeah big moment for this guy you know very well another the aussie show. himself he lasted for four rounds. And one big moment that got moment of the night. Oh, yeah. He cleared the table also. And he cleared the table on a movie release date. And he cleared these names. Liz Shannon Miller. Mm -hmm. Very hard a competitor. Yeah. Griffey Nooms, who had an incredibly strong showing. Yeah. Jacoby Bancroft, the guy that he just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with in a, a huge singles match. Had a pretty good showing, too. And... Uh, William the Beast Bibiani. Take us out Bibiani on a movie release dates question. That's insane. Yeah. And so I, good. everybody that joined after was like, hey man, thanks for taking out Bibs. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Bibs, for taking out those guys. And then thank you, Jacob, for yeah. taking out And Bibs. this is why I'm saying why Free For All is such a, a special event because, like, you can make a name for yourself in Free, oh, in free yeah. For All. Because look at um, Brandon Meyer. Yeah. Didn't get handled by Oyama, but didn't win his first match, but then goes into the Free For All, makes a name for herself. Partners up with Viviani and look where they are now. Oh, yeah. I think there was a handful of, of mm -hmm. rookies that people are going to be like, hmm, remember mm -hmm. that free throw? They yeah. did pretty well. Um, 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 oh, and also uh, a moment that it was that we thought was funny mm -hmm. was when Mark Hoyk was still in it. And oh, yeah. they, <laughs> they had a question about 13 going on 30, yeah. and he happened to get it right. And Mark Ellis said that he just, <laughs> it really tickles him to imagine Mark Hoyk oh. sitting there watching 13 going on 30. And it was just such a fun, subtle moment that you see the first glimpse of a smile creep up onto his face, and he just holds up his board. As, <laughs> yes, as to not maybe break character, yeah. I assume. Yeah. It was an adorable moment. <laughs> I know that you probably shouldn't use the word adorable for somebody who's supposed to be on corruption, but I love that moment. It was yeah. so fun. Um, who else do we got here? Who else do we got here? Um, Jeff Snyder comes in. Mm -hmm. He lasts for one, two, three, four rounds. Mm -hmm. And then at number 24, we get Benjamin Bateman oh, coming yeah. to the mix. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, so he comes in and he, I mean, I guess, you know, it's whatever. We can say what how many he lasted before mm -hmm. moving on to other people. Um, so Ben, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen rounds, two of which ended in sudden death. Yeah. I don't know if those count, but fourteen uh, full as, traditional rounds. Yeah, I think they count as one round so, including Good yeah. Lord. Um Brennan Meyer comes in, he lasts for three. Mm -hmm. John Roca lasts for two. Mark Knopic. Yeah, that was, another, the mix. that was another surprise. She did well. She lasted for two. Mm -hmm. Um Kimberly Foster is yeah. another rookie. This was her not debut. only not only her free for all debut, but her like everything. Shmodan debut. Yeah. Shmodan debut. She got a couple questions. She got like two questions in a row mm -hmm. where she was the only person on the table to get it right. And mm -hmm. there were the likes of Ben Bateman on the mm -hmm. table, and I think John Roca. Paul, Paul maybe. Yama was on Oyama. Right? I think you know, Oyama was on the, there was big the names on the table. Yeah. And there was like two or three questions that she was the only one to get it right. And it's like, whoa, where'd this girl come from? Yeah. She also when has is she a, debuting? She has a delightful accent. Exactly. Uh, I could listen to her say movie facts all the time. She, ASMR movie <laughs> trivia channel. <laughs> There's an idea for you. <laughs> yeah, Whisper movie facts to, the, to your microphone. She seems like a delightful lady. Yeah. She lasted for three rounds, but she she had a strong showing, I do yep. believe. I think she. I think even in three rounds, I think she made a name for herself mm -hmm. um, to where I think people are really going to have her on their radar. Um, Paulo Yama comes in at 33 he lasts for one two three four five six seven eight nine rounds not too shabby and he it looks like one two three four of them were perfect mm -hmm. so damn yeah uh, two of which also ended in sudden death um paul preston he had a strong showing one two three four one two three four five rounds mm -hmm. one was sudden death where he got eliminated mike kalinowski three rounds uh janine came in she lasted for two sudden death for one 
Jen Kemp came in. She had a pretty strong she had showing a strong too. Strong showing too, yeah. Because I think of that name and I go, hmm, IG. Yeah. You know? So, but she lasted for one, two, three along with a sudden death she made the final table she made the final table she had a perfect round mm -hmm. she, sudden death she went perfect when it was sudden death yeah so she did a really good job too um i think it was a big surprise number 40 alex damon yeah that jumping was, into the mix yeah that was, that was a surprise that was fun and then a surprise appearance Four, at 41, 41. <laughs> for a crash in the party crash in the party he got two questions right out of the one round that he lasted <laughs> yeah so you know that was fun. I'm assuming he was wearing a beanie because maybe his hair wasn't done. <laughs> maybe his wife was not into it that day. We're breaking the fourth wall. What are you doing? Whoops. Well, maybe the flirt and floss is married now. Probably nobody locked that down. Yeah, I mean. God, though many I, have tried. No, many have tried. I mean, maybe he's just having a bad hair day. Maybe he just likes to wear hats. Maybe maybe his, maybe uh, his dome was cold. Maybe. Who knows? Was, was he in, in uh, was he out of the country for this one? Was it cold? Is it cold there? Probably. Maybe. Germany? Ge yeah, is it cold in Germany right now? Yeah. I'm actually I'm actually doing a very no. Not, I oh, it. I got away for a little bit. Yeah, I lost the it. The longer it went on. Yeah. Should have just stopped it at Germany. Yeah. Ge Germany, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, oh yeah. Bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so um the final Final three, three mm -hmm. was Ben Bateman, Paulo Yama. Jen Kemp? Jen Kemp, yeah. She made the final table. Very impressive. Yes. And it was crazy because you got a final table where you got Two swag on one dungeon. Yeah. So, you know, if I was Winston, I'd be like, oh, hell yeah. yeah. You know, it's two on one. My odds are doing pretty good here, baby. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jen does get eliminated first out of three of them. So, it's down to Paul and Ben. I forget how many rounds they went, the, just the two of them. I think it was one round. I could be wrong. I don't know. But, um, but it did end in sudden death mm -hmm. um, where Ben missed the first one, got the second one. Oh, it has to be one one round. Oh, because it, yeah. they're, they're not just going to let them go on and on. Yeah, because, exactly. So it's yeah. one round. Um, they, they, so they go to sudden death. So Paul Paul and Ben both missed the first question of sudden death. They both got the second question right of sudden death. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately, Ben Bateman missed the third question. The Snowpiercer question. No, I thought he got that one right. He guessed on it. Remember? He Little said, ben? That, yeah. I thought the Snowpiercer was the second to last one. No, Snowpiercer is the one that Paul won on. Oh, because it was a polar bear. It was a polar bear. You're right. You're right, because he said a wolf. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I thought that he got that one right. You're, yeah. No, you're right. It yeah. was the Snowpiercer question, mm -hmm. the, the animal at the end that they saw, the survivors. And um, yeah, That's Ben said a wolf, bear. and it was actually a polar bear. It was fun, because as soon as Ben turned around his board, Paul was like, Wah! Yeah, polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those where you know you're right. Yeah. And once the answer gets revealed, it's like, yep, you're wrong. I win. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So huge win for Paulo Yama. Yeah. So now Paul slash Swag has a guaranteed title, title shot, shot opportunity for seven um, points up they sleeve, and um, an opportunity for seven points. Mm -hmm. And then the MVP was announced that it was Ben, ben Bateman. Bateman, who lasted how many rounds? Fourteen, 14 if I'm not mistaken. I mean, With the way that everything ended up playing out, mm -hmm. it's hard to argue argue when you last for fourteen rounds. Mm -hmm. um, so he gets three. Like the dungeon needs three points. Yeah. Ugh. Um. So yeah, yeah, he got those three points, and um, you know it's it's hard because William Bibiani to last for ten rounds. Yeah. Coming in at round one, you cleared the table of arguably Legends. the biggest names in the free for all. Yeah. Uh, arguably, so that's a kind of it's, a heartbreaking moment for William because it's like, yeah. Oh God, and, you yeah, do so much. Three points we really needed. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, and also you got your moment of the night with Jacob London clearing the table. Yeah. So, you know, there was a lot of good moments to choose from. But Ben Bateman did end up taking that MVP spot, mm -hmm. three points to the dungeon. Um, we don't we don't know what Swag's going to do with that title shot. I mean, because Paul is on, on, on a roll right now with yeah. the singles. Um, so I think he's, you know, he's a couple of wins away from a title shot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe he's in an American contender match coming up soon against somebody. Or he's in he's in line. He's on a path to to, to the title, so yeah. he really doesn't need it for singles. So does he use it for teams? Does he gift it to to one of those? You can't. Like, Laura has a, Laura has a title shot for Star Wars, so you don't use it there. Yeah. Their IG player is. Don't ask me unless remember. I look it up. Swag is zipper, right? Yes. Yes. And Paul is an IG, is an IG player as well. 
So he did have this funny joke. It's like, oh, you know, I'm thinking about going to the Star Wars. I'm like, wait, wait, what, what, what? I what? got a Star Wars question, right? So what? I'm going to announce my bid at the Star Wars battle. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it that Rogue One who said the line? Yes. There is no horizon? Yes. Or something? Yeah. Or, or yeah. Yeah, there's a problem on the horizon. There yeah. is no horizon, yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's two Star Wars questions, but I don't there know. There was a couple know. of Star Wars questions in, in this pure but like, I think the most likely scenario, it, or I think two, is either you, you go for it in teams. Yeah. Because, you know, that, that, that team's title has eluded them. Yeah. Or you hold on to it. Maybe the singles run doesn't go your way. And they're like, well, I got I'm going to cash in on it. And, yeah. and use it that way. So he's got options right now. Or they could hold on to it and use it to barter for next season, right? He maybe can. He can. The, he team, can. the team doesn't. He had. He can hold on to it. Yeah, I feel like when you got a name like Paulo Yama, you don't that, need it. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, when you got a name like Paulo Yama that won this opportunity, mm-hmm. I feel like to use it for um, somebody that's not Paulo Yama is kind of yeah. like, not that it's a bad decision at all, mm-hmm. but it just to me it just makes sense to be like, yeah, Paulo Yama. Yeah, let him He's use a it. former champ. He's going to put some good use to that title shot. Yeah. So, if I'm, you know assuming what's going to happen i would assume that it's going to either be paul for the singles or for final exam for the team yeah but you know who knows we've seen stranger things happen yeah. in the schmodown so and i'm wondering what like how's this and the implications because you you have to put the, the match somewhere on the books like you can't just be like all right yeah you, your, your title shot's coming it's like no i want to use it now yeah because correct me if i'm wrong something i'm pretty sure this is how it happened that um sam levine won a free-for-all mm-hmm Dan Merle just won his belts back in the triple third between Roka and and, uh, and Riley. Immediately after the match, Sam goes, I want to challenge. And Dan turns around right back around and he beats Levine for the title. Ooh, I don't know how it. you remember that. My God. It was a big moment. I was like, what? Man. I, if that's how you can use it, then it's like, whoa. So like, what happens if he's like, I want to cash on on this title shot between Dan and whoever Dan is facing. And it's like, all right, guess what? It's a triple threat now, suckers. Mm. can he do that i'm not sure i don't know if you can use it to turn it into a triple threat or if you're just gonna say i got winner you know i don't know maybe he can that's the power of the free-for-all i don't know so we'll see what happens with i'm curious to see where he goes but i think the most likely scenario for me what if i was paul either go for it in teams Mm -hmm. or hold on to it and see if your run doesn't go the way you you would hope and if it does go the way you hope then you cash in on teams that's exactly because like you can either go for the title right now or rack up points on your way to it because you're already on that that trajectory. Yeah, you were rack this close to a title shot in teams. Mm-hmm. You just hit a bad day. Exactly. You know. So that that's what I think he should do. Um, if if that's what he ends up doing, maybe that's great. But who, who knows? knows? Who knows? But who knows? Fantastic event. Um, I a love lot the of fun. love the free flow. There's because there's so many moments like you very rarely see me get excited over smoke Shmo- on. You, I did it several times, and this one's like, "What? Oh my god, that was oh, amazing!" Oh, like out of your seat, excited. Out of my seat, excited. You, oh, I do that in every free fall because, like, clearing the table when Viviani, That's huge. um, um, London, clearing the table, I'm like, what? Yeah, what? It's, oh yeah. It's there's a the free for all is such a great time, and yeah. I, I can only hope we get to the point where I can see it live. And the way that it's structured, literally anything can happen. Exactly, it's crazy. Any, but I mean, you have a rookie that clear the table, mm-hmm. like with big names. So, yeah, anything can happen. It's it's crazy. And I know that some people are like, man, I wish we could have more than one free-for-all. And PJ was like, please, please no. No. <laughs> no, I think one's enough. <laughs> yeah. One is enough. Because logistically, for, the, for the sake of the crew. probably a nightmare. For the sake of the crew. <laughs> well, and also, that's a lot of questions to burn through. It's a lot of questions to burn through. It's a lot of coordination. Make sure yeah. everybody's schedules line up, yep. especially digitally. And somebody said, oh, with how much the Star Wars division has exploded, we should do a Star Wars it'll be It'll be six days long with three people staying in there. <laughs> like, all, and also... Like, all ten people come in and it's like, nobody's eliminated after 57 deaths. Oh, my God. So. Well, and also, everybody's already afraid that we're running out of questions, yeah. which we're not. We're not, we're not even close. Keep my spreadsheet. We got a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, it would just burn through so many questions. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, it's logistically, it would be a nightmare. We're very lucky that we got this uh, high caliber of an event in an mm-hmm. online format. Yeah. Like, it's just amazing that they were able to pull this off and hats off to the crew. Yeah. The it, production crew, backstage crew, the, the, writing, the writing staff. staff. Every, oh my God. From top to the bottom, man. Just to handle, just to handle the, the scrub period is 
it's got to be you know taxing but just an it's, event like this yeah it's got to be just... tiring because the the free for all stream was i don't know what around 3 hours maybe 3, three and change yeah. something like that i don't even i would i'm curious how long filming actually was because there were lots of cuts you know stuff happened behind the scenes mm -hmm. so you wonder how long it actually was and mark <sighs> and christian probably tired yeah <laughs> reading questions that whole time and and every time somebody would have like a preamble before their answer i know i can just feel christian and mark like get to the answer <laughs> just we, say the answer we got 40 people in this man let's go <laughs> but that's what makes it fun but yeah, yeah i'm curious how long the actual filming was mm -hmm. because you know that it was at least i would say at least an hour longer because yeah. maybe there was technical difficulties internet you know, issues probably managers like hey what about this what about that you know there was yeah. stuff happens you know and you got to work through it so but an overall fantastic, fantastic event, event. Oh, I love so very exciting yeah. and our um Lovely. you know yeah high perfect president wonderful high priestess of the schmodown goddess of the schmodown the you know yeah grace herself miss mm -hmm. grace face she posted on the facebook group i took a screenshot mm. hopefully nothing got updated since i took a screenshot because <laughs> i didn't do my homework after i took the screenshot so hopefully it's all still accurate because this is what i got i'm not looking at the website because it said i think it said the frankie numbers was going to update it i'm just going off of this screenshot so what we got here she said morning geeks and nerds who worship the lioness an announcement for all of you for everything going on this week. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. We got Parker vs. Hannah for IG. Ooh. My stars. My stars. Thursday, the team's tournament begins. Yes. Lightning time versus the Outsiders. How do you think of that? You're on, that's your faction. What do you think of the name? I couldn't think of anything better. Yeah. So I can't I really thinking. say much. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I would like to have thought of something better, and believe me, I tried. I didn't get any. <laughs> I think so. that's the best you can get out of it. Sorry. Uh, the Outsiders is... The Outsiders. Oh, man. What Of what team? It doesn't say. It doesn't say the faction? No. People will correct us in the comments. <laughs> oh, boy. The Outsiders. Is it, is it Ben and Paul? Yes. Is it? Is it? I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. Might be. In any case, it's Lightning Time versus the Outsiders. And then Friday, another team's tournament match. We have Rushmore... Versus the press room. Ooh. And that is, I'm for sure, mm -hmm. Finstock Exchange versus Quirky Mercs. Getting our feet wet. Then, Friday, you have your pay-per-view. So there was a bit of an update. A bit of a switch yeah, up, if you will. So one team couldn't make it. Roxy informed Grace the odd couple will not be able to defend the titles on Friday due to scheduling. So they will be defended on a card in May. And if the odd couple yet again defers and are not able to defend in May, they oh, will be babe. stripped of the titles. So, that being said, Kalinowski Damon, what was the undercard, is now the overcard. And the undercard will be announced this week. It is TBD, TV my friends. Determined. So, and the Kalinowski Damon match is an IG number one contender match. So, huge. Huge. And it just goes to show that even the undercards are main events in and of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you can just be like, bloop, and it's just like, yep, that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good overcard. Yeah. So, you know, that just goes to show the caliber of matches we're exactly. getting. Exactly. So, and then also, I'm not going to run down the whole thing because why? Mm -hmm. But Grace also did release the whole schedule for the month of May. One thing that I will highlight, or the couple things that I will highlight, mm -hmm. is that the Star Wars tournament looks like it does start on May 5th. Mm -hmm. Revenge of the 5th, if you will. Um, team's tournament continues. Mm -hmm. And then I will highlight that on May 7th, mm -hmm. there is going to be a pay-per-view. The undercard is to be determined, but the overcard is Damon versus Demolanta 2. Oh, boy. Oh, man. You guys are in for it. <laughs> because if you watch the first one, sequel might might be just as good. <laughs> My God. I mean... We we I mean we knew it was gonna we we knew it was coming we just didn't know exactly when exactly so we knew it was gonna be sometime in May mm -hmm. fitting that it's the same week as Star Wars Day mm -hmm. May the fourth yeah May the fourth be with you mm -hmm. I and, mean that, uh, I'm pretty sure that was a plan all along I'm sure I mean why wouldn't you have the week of May the fourth why wouldn't you have the Star Wars title yeah it's a line. big Star Wars week you yeah. you got the Star Wars tournament starting that day mm -hmm. and then later on that week you got the Star Wars match that's going to the uh, title match that's going to happen mm -hmm. oh. We're, I mean, 
Yeah, we it's expected. Gonna a, it's gonna be a busy we expected, week. We, we fully expected once we won the title, we would have to turn around <laughs> in a month. Pretty soon it. after. Very pretty soon. In, pretty yeah. immediately. Pretty immediately after we'd have yes. to defend it. So, yeah. So that's what we got. Is there? Let's see. Uh, and the rest of the month is teams tournament, Star Wars tournament. Um, we got an IG match in there. You've also got the IG title match. Oh yeah. On May twenty first between Miss Kanopic Versus and the winner of, the winner of Damon Kalinowski mm-hmm. undercard to be determined. Okay. Um, big month for for Damon. <laughs> and then also May twenty eighth is a pay per view with Corruption versus the winner of the teams tournament. The teams tournament. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for a number one contender match. Mm-hmm. And then Odd Couple versus Shazam teams title. Yeah. So my goodness, another S- gigantic month in the world of Schmodown. Big month for the Mercs. We start the start the month off with the title defense, and then we start then we end the month with another title, a title match. attack. A title attack. <laughs> <laughs> big week for the Mercs. Big week. Yes. So big month. Big mo- yeah, sorry. Big month for the Mercs. Yes. Starting off strong and ending even stronger. Yes. So gonna be a great month. If you're not a part of the Patreon, if you're not buying the pay-per-views, what are you doing? Ooh. God, every like if you if you're a Schmodon fan, be just ten dollars. And if you can't afford the Patreon, then maybe just the one time pay-per-view. Yeah. You know? I mean don't have to worry about spoilies. You know? Yeah. But I, if you can't, that's cool too. I will I will say, like, people were People that were missing out on the, on, on the first title Star Wars match of the year, you missed out. You missed out on what ev- pretty much everybody was saying. Automatic match of the year, and we're we're what in what the, the second month of, of the of the year? What one was that? <laughs> I already forgot. March. Was, no, March. Yeah, it was March. Eighteenth ish. Yeah. No, it was nineteenth. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Something like that. So yeah, third. It's been so long. I don't know. I don't what is time? Know. What day is it? Yeah. So, if anything, the first pay per view of of the month and the last pay per view of the month. Yeah. It's like what three dollars? Don't go to Starbucks that day. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's it's gonna be worth it. If the first match between me and Damon was any indication of how good this the title match will be. And Lord knows that we're still doing our thing. We're yeah. still preparing. I, I know Alex is doing his thing. Mm-hmm. I, I know he's got his thing with Kalinowski coming up too. I wouldn't doubt that he's so, simultaneously working Star Wars. I mean, Wars, so. he's a machine when it comes to nerd stuff. King geek so, over there. King this geek. King geek. I mean that with all the love in the world. Oh, yeah. You know, because <laughs> look at the source. So <laughs> it's not like we're <laughs> what a nerd over here. <laughs> Oh, oh man. man! No, no, not at all. No, but yeah, no. We're gonna we're gonna do our best. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That's, that's all, all we can, can do. do. Yep. Anyways, we'll end this episode here. We've already well, Jesus, hour and a half. Uh oh, sorry everybody. Sorry. We were not good stewards of your time. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anyways, we'll end or this... ours for that matter. <laughs> what are we doing? Anyways, we'll end this episode here. Nikki D. Melanta, Star Wars competitor. Nikki D. Melanta, where can they find you online? Nah, debatable. You can find me on Twitter at Dimmy. D I M M M Y Y Y. As for me, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Drew Dimonta, D I M A L A N T A. If you listen on audio form, please follow the feed and rate us. Oh, right. And if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, and then click the bell icon over there in the lower right hand corner. See when we do things on YouTube's. Thank you. Sorry. Brain went faster than my mouth. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Beyond the Schmodown. We'll see you next, next time. time.